What's up everybody, it's Jeffrey Lyles, back at you with another installment of Lyles Figure Files. So last time I was thinking that we were just enjoying our victory lap. We had backed the HasLab Galactus. All of the tiers, the incentives were raised. We got the Frankie Ray Nova. We got the Silver Surfer with the cool new base and the different effects, colored at least, and the new paint job and head sculpt on Silver Surfer. And it was like, okay, cool, we're all done. And there's nothing left because there were four days, uh, I guess five days, when the Hasbro team had their latest live stream and there was no mention of anything else for the project. And, you know, you think back to when they debuted Galactus, Jesse Falcon was on with the crew and he said the third tier was the item that he was most excited about and really, really, really hoped we would get to so we could see this figure come to life. And... You know, with four days, it's like, all right, well, I guess they just decided to scrap it. Galactus is too much. The cost of oil and plastic, etc., have gotten to the point where we're just going to be have to be excited with this Silver Surfer, his new base, Frankie, Ro Frankie Ray Nova and her flame base, and call it a night. But that was not the case. So late Friday afternoon, we get a new Instagram for the Hasbro Pulse team with the final member of the HasLab Galactus set. And it is sensibly and of course making sense to get another Herald from Galactus. And it wasn't Fire Lord, it wasn't Airwalker, but this guy, Morg. And as the comic strip from Ron Lim shows, Morg lives. And this figure, and I had to include, of course, a shout out to Ryan Tim with a trading card shot here. So we see him in all of his comic book glory and Morg will be unlocked at 20,000 20, backers. So, I mean, this head sculpt is amazing. You know, normally when I see these figures, I don't see the artists in them, but this guy looks 100% like Ron Lim. I did some research because Morg is not a character I knew much about before I started. And I was like, this guy is 100% 90s. I mean, check out from these boots with the spikes, the razor gauntlets. I mean, he screams 90s. And Ron Lim was take, was taking care of the Silver Surfer book at that time. And this was the Herald that, that he was fighting. I mean, everything about this guy is just 90s extreme to the amazing excess. All of these spikes everywhere on his shoulders on his biceps even on his armor and his belt so somebody can't sneak up from behind and grab him by the waist and that crazy axe you see how he looks i mean all that detail with his skin it's like whoo great job as usual hasbro team continues to knock out these figures and this one i thought maybe a little bit of a stretch because Everything had kind of calmed down. I think the project was at 18,000 backers after Silver Surfer. So we needed 20,000. But as the time I'm recording this, we only need 876 more backers to get more. So if you have the income, and as always, that's the preface for everything when I'm trying to back these and push these crowdfunding deals. If you got it, let's go ahead and get it. But if not, you know, save up your money. Maybe we can get the next one for next year. So with 876 and two more days to go, I think it wraps up uh, Monday afternoon. So we still have some time. I think the odds are pretty good that we're going we're gonna to get more. So I can't wait to add another Herald to the Galactus Herald display and have one more cosmic character. You know, maybe he's somebody you can throw up against your Guardians of the Galaxy. I'll probably do a lot more reading up on Morg and his appearances, but... I think we're going to have this guy into the collection. So now let's move on to what I had actually planned to talk about for this next one. And this is the live stream from Mattel with their WWE product. So they've had this crazy deal going with Amazon, right? Where they've been hyping up this Ultimate Edition exclusive Hulk Hogan from WrestleMania 9, where he kind of came in and stole all of Bret Hart's and Yokozuna's Thunder. And... Jeff Hardy and for whatever reason Amazon is just not on it they don't have like a pre-sale window actually established so when the Mattel team is like hey check it out bookmark these things they should be up they're not up and this has been the second time where we've been hyped up we've been ready fingers at the keyboard ready to press order add to cart and nothing so 
there have been a few lucky people who've been able to sneak through and get the Hogan, get the Jeff Hardy. But for the most part, a lot of us who actually want these figures have not been able to get them. So let's take a quick closer look at these guys real fast. I'm not really enthused about getting WrestleMania 9 Hogan. This is the first red and yellow. I don't know why we always say that, but it's yellow and red Hulk Hogan in the Ultimate Edition line. He's got the butterfly shoulders. He's got the super tan like Hogan had. But my biggest issue with this figure is he's just reusing all of the parts from the Hollywood Hogan figure for the head sculpt, the yelling head sculpt. He's got the stubble beard and he's got the, I mean, none of these expressions outside of the one that's the default one that's on the figure really works for this version of Hulk Hogan. And I just wish that Mattel, the big giant company, could put out more head sculpts at as fast as a rate as Jazzwares does with their AEW figures. We've seen four Kenny Omega figures and of those four, three of them have different head sculpts. That's kind of what I want to see from Mattel with these Ultimate Edition lines. These figures aren't cheap, so I'd rather get some different head sculpts, not just the same one minus the painted on beard for, you know, Hollywood. So we've got this. We've got the cup hands so he can do this, of course. We've got some gripping hands and we've got the pointing fingers, which is great. So we can get the you, um, the tearaway shirt. Jax kind of perfected this deal with the let's put the Hulkamania logo right down the front. So when he rips it, I'm not really loving that because it kind of just breaks up the Hulkamania or Hulk still rules, whatever that logo is up front because of the big, you know, unavoidable, nasty looking Velcro strip on the inside. And then we got the weight belt because I don't know if he was wearing that back in WrestleMania 9, but... Hollywood Hogan did so we get it again I really am looking forward to and I'm just going to wait for the 1986, 1987 1990 era Hulk Hogan in this Ultimate Edition format hopefully a little bit bigger because this one is on a slightly smaller build which makes sense and is appropriate for you know Hulk Hogan back in Wrestlemania 9 because he stopped taking his vitamins alright so next up is the Jeff Hardy and Jeff Hardy has the exact prop exact opposite problem he's way too big i mean he's like super jack jeff hardy and he's one of the slighter members of you know slightest members of the wwe roster just in general this figure is too broad it looks like he's got the steve austin torso which doesn't work for a guy like jeff hardy so mattel's probably going to need to work in a smaller body mold for guys like hardy edge you know just those guys who are slimmer and you know, don't need to look so jacked. But this guy at least has some cool head sculpts with the face paint. He's got his tank top, so he can do that look from when he was the WWE champion. Outside of the tour, so I think he really looks good. I like the arms. And Jeff is another one of those guys who will benefit from that butterfly shoulder. If for no other reason, because you can do a pretty awesome looking swanton bomb. All right, so that's that. And then we got the latest reveals of a Triple H because this was part of the fan takeover line so it's been this big suspense as to which version of these guys we were going to get. So the other options were bald-headed old Triple H and in his prime deserving of top heel status King of the Ring 2000 Triple H. Instead the fans voted for this DX version of Triple H and you know, I'm not, I was not the biggest fan of the DX reunion era with him and Sean hawking merchandise. You know, we've got the t shirt, I think that's cool. We've got the hat here, the water bottle. They probably could have thrown in the glow sticks, but for the most part, just didn't really care about these guys at this point. The one thing this figure has over the other one, the first figure, is the butterfly shoulders. Like I told you, those add so much to the posability and just being able to do things. For a guy like Triple H, getting that pedigree on and being able to actually flex the shoulders in more will make those poses look so much better. So this is a really cool looking deal. I'm trying to figure out if it has that same kind of swappable parts um, as you've seen in the AEW from Jazzware figures where it's just easy to pull and pop which I love, of course, and it's something that maybe I could use that old Triple H and swap it out so I can get the Triple H version that I actually want. 
with even more articulation. So that's Triple H. The other one is the Ultimate Warrior from WrestleMania 6. We've seen this a few times. Here's the two belts. He comes with the yellow Intercontinental title and the black world title that he got from Hulk Hogan. Now this one, I feel like they could have done a little bit more. Get that wilder mane of hair because at WrestleMania 6, Warrior's hair was off the charts. It was He looked like an animal and he was just looking so fierce. It's kind of brown, blondish deal. He's got the big paint for the Warrior logo right there. The kind of burst. But then the alternate head sculpt has him yelling with no paint. And I feel like it would have been cooler to have less paint on there. But not completely off like this. And I also think that we just needed that wide hair to really capture Ultimate Warrior from 1990. Otherwise, this figure looks cool. He's got like the orange tights, the green boots. The tassels look way better. The only thing was, in this fan takeover vote, one of the other options was Survivor Series 1990. And that event is probably right up there with Royal Rumble 92 for me, WrestleMania 3. This is just one of my favorite WWE events because this had everybody. It had all the stars basically from the rock and wrestling era with a few exceptions like Andre, Hillbilly Jim, JYD. They still had Tito, and Tito got the special shout for being in the final with Hogan and Warrior, and I just thought that was cool. But also, what was very cool was Ultimate Warrior's outfit. He had the silver um, metallic paint scheme and tights, and it was just, it, it's one of my favorite looks for Ultimate Warrior. And in this line, I was really excited to get this guy in that. So I'm hoping that eventually Mattel can revisit it because. Everybody knows in this kind of setting, they're always going to go with Ultimate Warrior from WrestleMania 6. I didn't add a picture in here, but we have a new vote where we can decide the next fan takeover figure. And that's Goldberg. And the options are Goldberg from July 1998, which is Goldberg in his prime in WCW as a world champion. He's beaten Hogan and now he's just running the running the show, squashing all the other big talent until Kevin Nash goes, not so fast, big guy. I still think the Bam Bam Bigelow should have been the one to beat Goldberg, but that is an entirely different story. So we'll say that for later. And so the other option is the WWE version. So that's him with his kind of domino uh, tights with the black on one side, white on the other. This is basically for when he's fighting Triple H and, you know, trying to figure out how many times he has to lose before he can go. Um, and then the last version is the modern day Oldberg gray beard. Not that I can talk. And it's basically the same Goldberg figures before, just with gray hair and the blue world title. And I feel like I don't ask you guys for a whole lot. Like on the site, I don't beg, I don't plead, but please vote. For the fan takeover WCW version of Goldberg because this is the acceptable acceptable the only acceptable choice because we've already got Hollywood Hogan so we've got a guy to fight him right away you're gonna need a Triple H and a Randy Orton and a Batista if you ask for the second one and there's so many guys the modern guys who aren't in ultimate edition format yet and we've got like 30 of Oldberg. I mean, there's there's no difference to his look. And honestly, after watching this last SummerSlam match, he's not doing much of anything that you need the Ultimate Edition format, the articulation for at all. So let's just keep that moving. Let's not get a Goldberg in any way outside of WCW. And then finally, the WWE Elite 87 figures are now up. You can pre-order them now. I will include links on this as well so you can grab Apollo Crews, Santos Escobar, Candice LeRae, and Asuka and Otis. Now, Candice, I do want this figure. I mean, look at that jacket. It looks really cool with all the details. I mean, they just did a really nice job with it. But she doesn't have the double-jointed elbows, which is the new thing that they're doing going forward. And it's like, ugh. I really don't want to get these figures now with outdated articulation, which is why I'm not getting that Hulk Hogan from Survivor Series 1989, I think it is, on that figure. Because he's just lacking. In, well, he has the double-jointed elbows, but the problem with him is that goofball head sculpt, which is the worst. 
Um, but there's so many guys who are, they're kind of doing a slow transition. And Candice is another one that doesn't have the double jointed elbows, which adds so much to their articulation. I'm going to get her. I hope that she has the kind of range as the Io Shirai figure, which didn't have those, but had a great up and down for the elbow range. So maybe that's the case here. But yeah, and the only sad thing is we won't be able to have the way in a box set because of the way these guys are moving so fast with how they're destroying my old beloved NXT. But anyway, Candice looks really good, and I think they did an awesome job on her figure. So that's it. That's it. That's all I'm talking about in terms of reveals and all that stuff. But I did have some cool new figures that I got uh, delivered. So I'll be doing reviews on them on Lyle's Movie Files very soon. Got the Hush Catwoman. I thought I missed out on her, but Sideshow Collectibles, you know, this is important why you get onto that wait list because you can actually get the figures if you sign up for the wait list occasionally. I've had a few that didn't go through, but this time I got the call, got the email, and I was like, oh, heck yeah, sign me up. I want Catwoman. So I already have the Hush Batman, Blue Version, and the Hush Superman. So now I've got Catwoman. Looking forward to getting Hush himself. Still not too sure about that Joker figure because the head sculpt is kind of wonky for me. But yeah, and I'm definitely getting Nightwing, of course. Not so much on that Stratosphere Air Raid Batman. The other one I got was Ultra Magnus. I got him from GameStop. Just found him in the store. And this is the Kingdom one. I've been doing a lot of the reviews of the Transformers, the movie studio series figures. So I was very happy to get this guy and I have to pay a ridiculous amount of money for him. And thanks to GameStop having a 20% off Transformers sale, I was able to order uh, Galvatron. So I'm very happy to get these two pitted up against each other. That should be a lot of fun. And look for those on lostmoviefiles.com. But for now, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back next week because I'm sure there'll be some crazy new reveals. So look forward to you. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time. This episode of Laos Figure Files has been filed.